नमो भगवते वासुदेवा ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवा ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवा Live from the Govardhan Echo Village in beautiful downtown Maharashtra, India. Just kidding. We're out in the woods. This is Wisdom of the Sages, our daily yoga podcast. Thanks, Maris, holding it up. Oh, you're filming me on Instagram Live. I thought she was holding it up because I've got my <laughs> cell phone here that has Wisdom of the po- Sages on it that I sometimes get wrong the name of our podcast. And I'm here with – my name is Raghunath. I'm here with our co-host, Kastuba. And we are here with about 66 people listening on Zoom. They listen every day. They're regular students of the Bhagavatam, as well as a huge gang of our teacher trainees are here for this month. We're having an ecstatic time. Tomorrow's our day off. We get a day off tomorrow where we're going to do, what are we going to do? Oh, hiking up to that mountain. Hiking up to uh, Shiv Chapati's fort. They named the airport after him. You know that? Chachapati. He's like a folk hero. Um, anyway, Kostub, want to say anything? No, I'm just uh, happy to be here with everybody. Looking forward to diving into the Bhagavatam. This is our daily Bhagavatam class. If you're unfamiliar with the Bhagavatam, we do this ex- exclusive, especially for yoga teachers who want to under- have a, get a grip of yoga philosophy so they can apply it to their class, give some weightiness to their yoga class. And um, also people who just love yoga and love to uh, dip into the philosophy and find, find actually how ancient, yeah, this stuff is ancient. It talks about another time and the world was structured differently. We can't expect it to be the same. We're never gonna recreate what way it was and I don't think that's a, that's a home run here, but there are valuable life lessons that we can add to our life. There is some uh, uh, maybe light shine of some of the common pitfalls that people still bang in, bang in their heads against the wall with. And I find it sort of like a, a cane. A cane? A cane. A banister. A crutch. Crutch, that sounds bad. I, I, use, I use spirituality <laughs> as a crutch. But I use it, yeah, I use it to, well, you know what? It is a crutch. But a crutch is a good yeah, thing. Yeah, if you got a bad leg, he's a crutch. <laughs> got a bad, what's wrong with a crutch? You got a bad leg. Come on. You know, materialists always like to claim things like, I like to face reality. You guys dig your head in the sand. Not true. Not true. Spiritual life means you actually have to face the biggest reality Mm. of our own mortality. Ask anybody here in the teacher training. We talk about our own mortality practically every class. (laughs) We talk about our mortality. We talk about the the pain of having a body, the pain of having a mind. And But what we do is, uh, and it's not like we do it because I'm like this great genius, but it's that the Bhagavatam talks about how to heal it, how to correct it, how to correct some bad thinking. We got some bad thinking programmed into us from childhood, from the way we were raised as kids, but also just bring in, we just bring in luggage from previous birth. What do you think about that? Trainees, what do you think about that? Yeah. We're born, you have twins. One twin's going to be like this and one twin's going to be like that. They're not the same just because they have the same parent. You love them the same, you treat them the same. They're coming into this world with a whole separate deck of, you know, not a separate deck, separate hand, a separate hand. Dealt a separate hand. They're dealt a separate hand. They may be sitting at the same table. Yeah, and you know what? We're all different. These bodies are all going to be different. And sometimes I think as a parent, parents know this, we think, well, where have I gone wrong? What have I, do? you, didn't do, you didn't go wrong. <laughs> you, you, know, you try your best and you know what? You can't change, you got to Watermelon seed, that's going to be a watermelon. Don't try to make it a grape. That's going to be a watermelon. What do I think about that? What do you think about that, Kostuba? <laughs> I agree. We should not try to make one fruit another. Yeah, you try to influence your kids the best you can. That's sort of, sort of parenting. Yeah. But, but ultimately, these kids have like their destiny, their choices. Yeah. They're not going to necessarily become you. Part of parenting is loving and letting go. It's sort of like the whole message of the Bhagavatam is that we learn to love in this world And we have to love, but we can't control, we can't possess, we can't own. Why? Because we don't own nothing. We own nothing. Everything will be taken away from us in due course. Everything, my possessions, my home, right? 
is the material world is expert at cutting away false identities. Like it's very common for people in New York City, like you, like you, Costuba. Yeah. People in New York City identify with where they live. I live in Brooklyn. Are you where in Brooklyn? Ah, <laughs> it's all where you live in Brooklyn, right? Or right, and, 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 and uh, I think it's generalizations, but it is true. It's true. <laughs> People even sometimes, hey, where are you living? Right? Come on, Rashik, is that true? Right? She's saying yes. Where are you living? And if you live on that side, on the, that side of that river, it's cool. But if you live on, on the other side of the other river, uncool. Brooklyn's and we have this cool. whole. Are you saying something about Jersey? I'm not. <laughs> okay. But that's the collective uh, conversation. <laughs> Can't live across the East River or the uh, Hudson River. We can live across the East River. That's a cooler river to live across from. Isn't that crazy? It is. It's crazy talk, actually. But, you know, we, we put these values on things and they have no uh, substance. Get, they have no real substance. How did I get even talking about this? <laughs> You're just, it was Watermelon all good. Seeds. Whatever it was. <laughs> I was, I was mortality uh, I was, talking about our mortality. Talk, we, we talked about, I lost it. Okay. It's cool. That's when sometimes I lose the train. The train goes so off tracks. You just can't even get that train back on the track. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. Off quite it was fun while there. we were on it though. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but that's our, anyway, the Bhagavatam is to, Oh, how we can have things in this world. Love. We have to love things. And we have to understand. We, oh, we, everything is taken away from us. Was yeah. Kids. Anyway, the whole yeah. material world is specially designed. Oh yeah. I identify with my home as me. Yeah. I identify with my car as me. Yeah. You can go on Instagram, follow a car group. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> They're my car people. You know, you get a motorcycle group, a car group, uh, uh, you know, a, the county, Columbia County, New York, whatever it is, we have some extension of our ego with the place we were born, even. You know, I'm on a hometown group on a Facebook, right? And so we have, th th that's me, that's me, but it's not me. And, and that's like pulling out the roots of a false identity. And those roots go very deep. I actually think I'm this thing. Mm. And, the, and, and all the Vedic literature, not to, and this isn't me talking because I don't know anything. This is the history of yoga. Every sacred literature you read of ancient India, Vedanta Sutra, Bhagavad Gita, Mahabharata, Yoga Sutra, every sacred literature you read starts all with these af aphorisms like Aham Brahmasmi, I'm spirit, or the whole second chapter of the Gita, or the first part of the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita is all out. You're not matter, you're spirit. It's the underlining theme of all of it. And then due to some karma, you get a body. And that body has certain proclivities, likes and dislikes. It's not you, but the first illusion is that it is. It's the, imagine if I give you a long uh, mathematical equation. Oh, you got to add up all these numbers, Raghu. And the first one I do is one plus one is four. Screws up the entire Screws thing. up the entire calculation. So the yogis say that by getting this first premise, in a sense, premise, like a false premise. Uh, sum of an addition. I guess the answer is a sum, right? One okay. plus one. The sum of two numbers. And if I get that wrong, I've screwed up everything. Mm -hmm. If I get this first premise that I'm a body, then all my ideas for happiness, joy, groundedness, peace, fun, Deep-rooted pleasure is actually all askew. Nice. It's askew, Prabhu. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Occasionally, you'll hear me and Kostuba calling each other Prabhu. Prabhu is a very sweet way of addressing each other in a yoga community. It means master. So if I look at him as my Prabhu, uh, I, 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 that makes me to think of myself more as the servant. We find it much more kind than saying, Yo! which is the way we used to address each other in the old days. We've upgraded to Prabhu. Yo is a little intimidating, like, yo! It's like, <laughs> me? Yeah, yo, yo! <laughs> Prabhu. Like, the language is sweet. Hmm. The language is sweet. And it trains the mind to be a little sweet and a little kind. Thank you for sharing that, Prabhu. Did you hear that? He called me Prabhu. Well, thank you, Prabhu. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Shall we, shall we carry on? Yeah. Were we going to take some questions now? Oh, yeah, we're going to take them later? Yeah, there were a couple of good questions on Telegram. One was uh, from Eric Noble said, 
it seems why we started Satya Yuga because it seems like it's the yugas are getting worse and worse and worse. It, we don't really start in it's like seasons. They're just always changing. It's not like we're starting out there. They're just changing and changing and changing. After Kali Yuga comes Satya Yuga. Things degrade. It doesn't end. And, and then you put them back together. You put them back together, right? Things yeah. fall apart and you rebuild it. It burns, burns down and then things sprout out. That so, I, yeah, I don't think it has a beginning. Satya well, Yuga. I mean, if you were to start the Bhagavatam's description at the beginning of the universe, it starts with Satya Yuga. But it's a rolling ball. But it keeps rolling. What's the, you know, what's, the, what's the beginning of a rolling ball? Yeah. Where it starts, perhaps, but... Yeah. Yeah. So I wouldn't say it, it all, because, yeah. How's that? Did you hear the other, What was the other question? There's another good... Oh, someone asked a question about angels. What do you think about angels guiding, guiding lights, gu- gu- guiding beings in your life? Myself? Yeah, what do you think? That was a question. You know, I... I th- Those two was like, eh, I don't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't buy my own sensitivity to that kind of thing. You know what? I don't, I don't believe that I'm sensitive enough to be in touch very well with that kind of thing. You know? You don't have angels? I, I'm not saying that I don't. <laughs> I'm not saying I would even be sure exactly what that means. You know, that there are, there are benevolent beings in the universe that have a certain interest in me? Is that, is that what yes, you Yes, that's the idea of a, of a, of a, of a good angel, and a I white believe, angel. I, I believe in a, that. Uh, that I believe in. A, a, a positive angel, whatever you want to call yeah. it. You know, you know, in other words, are there, for instance, we practice um, in a particular lineage. Is, are, are there members of that lineage before me that are, aware of me and thinking about me and benevolent towards me. And yeah, I, 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 I would hope so. I, you know, I, I do believe that. I believe I speak to them. I don't really hear it if they're speaking to me. <laughs> right. But, but I do believe that. My opinion? Yourself? Yeah. Careful with the angels. I believe in them. And I believe that there are guardian angels personally. Uh, and I believe that Shiva is your guardian angel. Well, I've had mystics tell me Shiva has been protecting me from all types of danger in my life. True story, but I'm not going to get into that, but I've met mystics. They know stuff. It's it's uncanny. And Shiva has been watching, got my back this whole lifetime. I totally believe that because I could have been dead many times over. So it wasn't Shiva. It was some benevolent, uh, some benevolent, angel out there that being said carrying a, carrying a trident you got to be careful because there's malevolent angels as well uh-huh. there's not just benevolence out there sometimes when people go oh, i'm going to channel how do you know who you're channeling and how do you know where they're chat and then what happens is you become in debt to some malevolent being watch out this is becoming a new type of podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I call it malevolence. <laughs> malevolence being with Ruggenoth. Welcome to the Dark Angel Podcast <laughs> with Ruggenoth Capo. Yes. Um, yeah, but you know, it's like, it's like uh, Ouija boards. I don't mess with them. I keep it simple. I like to keep it simple. <laughs> right? You guys mess with Ouija boards? Not interesting. No way, man. Scary. <laughs> As far, I go as far as the magic eight ball. That's about as far as I get into dark, black magic. Because <laughs> the magic eight ball is like a complete. I wonder what the history of the magic eight ball is. Can you look that one up? <laughs> Mara lost her phone. Come on, Mara. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, I just think it's worth exploring dark angels, bright angels. But I've been told. Shiva. 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 Shiva's watching out for me. So we're going to dive into Canto 1, Chapter 3. Interesting stuff we're going over here. I can't think of any more questions. If you got some, uh, to look at the yugas and change it. Oh. Got some info on the magic eight ball. I wanted to see if it had. Well, you know, I sometimes like Ouija boards. It's made by whatever Milton Bradley, but they have these origins in some. Uh, I'd like to find the origins of Ouija boards too, because someone can look that up. <laughs> the magic eight ball was invented by Albert Carter. I thought it was going to say. I could have sworn Albert I was going to say Aleister Crowley. Okay. <laughs> Inspired by his mother's qualities. I don't want to hear this. <laughs> it was, a Ouija board. was it dark enough for you? It wasn't dark <laughs> enough. I want the Ouija. Origins of the Ouija board. 
We got it. Damodar Priya is on it. She's like, I've always wanted to know also. <laughs> okay. The Ouija itself was created and named in Baltimore, Maryland in 1890. But the use of the talking boards was so common. By 1886, the news reported the phenomenon taking over the spiritualist camps in Ohio. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> We're also the spiritual camp. Is this a spiritual camp? This is sort of a spiritual camp. I'm, do you mind if I dive into the Ouija? I think it's important. <laughs> the Ouija board, also known as the spirit board or talking board, is a flat board marked with letters. Oh, we know that. We, we all know what it is. Um, okay, participants place the fingers on the planchette, and it's moved about the board to spell out words. Ouija was formerly a trademark belonging to... Parker Brothers. <laughs> and it's absolutely become a trademark for... Okay, I don't want to hear that. I want to know the origins of the Ouija board. The Catholic Church and other Christian denominations have warned against using Ouija boards, holding that they can lead to demonic possessions. Hmm. Occultists, on the other hand, are divided on the issue, with some saying that it can be positive transformation. Others reiterate the warnings of the Christians and, and caution inexperienced users against it. They caution inexperienced users. Paranormal and supernatural beliefs associated with Ouija's have been harshly criticized in the scientific community because they tend to believe nothing since they are characterized. <laughs> <laughs> the action of the board can be parsimoniously explained by unconscious movements of those controlling the pointer. Anyway. All what right. do you think about that, Kostuba? I think that's a couple of minutes we'll never be able to buy back, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think this is colors in the whole occult thing. Okay. And that uh, I think it's important to I think it's important to just sort of get Okay, let's get get it story. maybe get it out of our system. Get it out of our system. Okay. Oh, somebody said Ouija is an Egyptian word that means good luck. So tell it to the it. tell it to the Christians. <laughs> <laughs> I side with the Christians, okay. and I don't mess with Ouija's. <laughs> I'm just saying there are there are malevolent forces out there as well. They're ghosts. So that's a Vedic thing. Here we there's go. Ghosts. There's spirits. There's rakshasas, <laughs> Brahmin rakshasas. The whole, it's in the Mahabharat. I'm not making this up. <laughs> Unembodied beings. Really? Thank you, Alice. Really, really. Thank you. Did you say yep? Oh, who would? Oh, thank you. Damodar Priya knows the deal. Nobody's contradicting you in any way, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Guess what attracts ghosts? <laughs> Talking about ghosts. Uh, and, whistling. and whistling. Serious. <laughs> Serious. And urine? Urine. urine. Okay, our, uh, our Ayurvedic teacher says urine attracts ghosts as well. Also, tamasic thing. When your body is in tamas, it attracts spirits. Why does it always end up with ghosts? It, it always, always ends up here. Only with you. <laughs> <laughs> Hauntings are real, man. Okay. <laughs> where did I just? Where was the? Oh, par parment. Oh, okay. Are you going to say Parmenides? Parmenides? I was going to go into Parmenides' okay. exorcism story, but. Didn't we just have another exorcism story recently? Mm. Parmananda went to see a, the famous uh, guy in Mayapur who was the uh, Ghostbuster. <laughs> if he doesn't mind, I'll paraphrase the story. He was, he was getting ready to go, and there's a long line to see this guy. They're from, just like you have in America, you have this family. My father was a carpenter. His father was a carpenter. His fa it's like that in India. With a, My father was a ghostbuster. His father was a ghostbuster. <laughs> and it goes down like this for lines. They're exorcists. And they exorcise spirits out of you. And so Parmananda went, and he called all these people. Because sometimes we think we have an ailment, and it's a spirit. Mm-mm. So the Ayurvedic doctor, I'm going to just inter, if you don't mind, because I got it in that microphone, but Parmen said he went to the Ayurvedic doctor. He said, there's nothing wrong with him. You should go see the Ghostbuster. The Ghostbuster. 
And so he went to the Ghostbuster, but he was like late or everybody was ahead of him. But he saw the guy's face. The guy saw his face and the secretary or whoever was handling the, the client says, uh, you're going to have to come back. Uh, sorry, it's too late in the day. The doctor can't see you. Um, and so he started walking down the hill or walking away. And uh, the assistant came, come back, come back. The doctor wants to see you. So he comes back and all of a sudden, he says, what's the matter? Do you think I have a ghost? And the doctor said, no, I noticed something about you. He goes, were you famous in any way? Mm. He said, yeah, I was in a band. We toured all over the world. We traveled. I was a guitar player. He said, this is it. He said, whenever people are fans of yours, they love you for no reason. But there's also an element of people that hate you for no reason. Mm. That collective hate of being in the spotlight has caused sickness and then parvin on this he says come back tomorrow morning and we will perform the exorcism and he said well i'm got a flight early in the morning tomorrow he goes you have a flight early in the morning and the exorcism is tonight <laughs> <laughs> It's all true. All this stuff is true. <laughs> what is that spirit of the butterfly that just floated around? Yeah, look, there's a benevolent force. He was healed. He's black though. After that all my physical immediately It all works. It all works. Parmenides says all of his physical ailments went away after the exorcism. Quest, question coming in. What is this? What are you passing me? Oh, thank you. I get it. Everybody's pushing. The, the sober ones of the group are pushing me to start the Bhagavatam class. Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Here's our special invocation we say before reading. Narayanam namaskritya naram chaiva narotamam devim saraswatim vyasam etojayam mudiraye. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, I want you to offer respectful obeisances to the personality of Godhead Narayan. Unto Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, um, and uh, to Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Shula Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta Prayeshvabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya Bhagavati Uttamashloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki by regular attendance in classes on the Srimad Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed and loving service to the personality of Godhead, whose praise with transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Ajnana Tamarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Mulatam Yena Tazmai Shri Gurave Namaha. So by the way, if you're listening to this on Instagram, Go to Wisdom of the Sages on your podcast, wherever you find your favorite podcasts, or on YouTube under Wisdom of the Sages, and join us. And if you want to join us live on Zoom, you've got to email our executive producer who lost her phone. It's uh, <laughs> Wisdom of the Sages 108 at gmail.com. And she'll get you live on Zoom. Yeah, Daniel Brigham says, possible spinoff podcast, Ghost Stories with Raganoff. <laughs> you know, every podcast got like a spinoff podcast. Notice that? If you like this podcast, you might also like <laughs> the whole Garuda Purana. We're reading the Bhagavad Purana. The Garuda Purana is all about ghosts. <laughs> Kostuba's like, can we go <laughs> on, please? <laughs> That's why you're here, Kostuba. Keep the train on the track. All right, so we are on uh, Canto 1, text 3, chapter 3. Yep. Chapter, chapter three. 3, text 3, that's text how you three. say it. It is believed that all universal planetary systems are situated on the extensive body of the Purusha. We said the Purusha in one sense means Godhead, God, the, yeah. the highest being, Vishnu. But he has nothing to do with the creative material ingredients. His body is eternally in spiritual existence par excellence. Um, we have a problem. Our body is not us. We have a soul. Our soul is us. Whereas Bhagavan or the Purusha, the body is the same as the soul. Our bodies are temporary. They fade. 
They tend to smell after time. It deteriorates. And eventually it, it just flakes back ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The soul is eternal. The soul is the only thing that's sat. The material body is asat. You look like you're about to say something. No, no. I mean, well, we can speak a little bit about this verse. It's saying the Purusha. They're different. This, the sages in the first chapters said, describe the avatars of Krishna. And what we're hearing right now is what's called the Purusha. Av- we're hearing about the, what's called the Purusha avatars. It means that to, to take care of the entire material world in which there are many universes and then which in each of those universes there are innumerable living beings. It, Krishna will expand into three different Purusha avatars. Uh, oh, yeah. The first one here is being called Karna Dakshai Vishnu. Sometimes it's also the, 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 um, the term um, Maha Vishnu is used. Oh, wait a second. Yeah. Is that it? Mm-hmm. And so that was the first Vishnu? Yes. The first one is yeah, Karna Daksha Vishnu. Karna Daksha, gotcha. Or we could say Maha Vishnu is also used. Karna means is referring to the ocean that he's lying on within this big bubble within the spiritual sky. What does causal mean? The causal ocean? I, you Does know, it mean it, it's it has a cause? It creates causes? I, I believe that everything, you know, there's an origin. Who's to got it. Webster's? You've, Webster's app. Yeah. Thank you, Vasu. But that there's a cause behind all causes. You can give it's the back. cause of all causes, the ocean of. Pertaining to acting of a cause. It's the cause it's, of all causes. It's kind of the ocean. ocean of everything that's going to The ocean happen. of everything. Okay, that makes sense. The ca- I finally got it. The causal ocean. Causal. And so that, so it's described that, and this is on the cover of the first canto of the Bhagavatam. If people want to Google that. Right, if you want to Google that picture. or on YouTube, on Zoom, you can just look so at it. So you have this vast spiritual sky, but within that there's like kind of a, a bubble in a sense, which is the material realm. Yeah. Lord Vishnu is lying down in that realm. And from his, and what's going to describe now is from his pores, unlimited universes come. What has this got to do with the flat Earth theory? Absolutely nothing. Just Absolutely drop nothing. That. Just drop, drop that it. Okay. Just drop it. It <laughs> goes flat Earth. We're not going there today. We're not going there. Okay. <laughs> We're not going to the Kennedy assassination. We're Kennedy, not going to- <laughs> was Kennedy assassinated by malevolent beings, or <laughs> did or did we not go to the moon? <laughs> <laughs> We're bringing it back okay. to Lord Vishnu. Okay. Anyway, from that Karnadakshai Vishnu, he sweats. Yes. Right? That's the o- and that creates the ocean that he's the water that he's lying on. No, no, no. Yes. Wait a second. I'm going back a step. From no, this creates other universes. He lies down. And then from his pores come other universes. And uh, from these universes have uh, have uh, innumerable universes have sprung up from that sweat. In each and every universe, the Purusha enters. This is into that. Now That's, this will be the second, yeah, the second of one. the Purusha avatars. Garbo Dakshai. Garbo Dakshai Vishnu. Garbo refers to the navel. From his navel grows the lotus. Upon that lotus is born Brahma, who is like in- Garbo. What's that yoga pose? Um, Pit Garbo Pindasana. Garbo Pindasana. Yeah. Yeah. Good one, Kostuba. Uh, yoga yeah. pose. Used to do it every day. Garbo Pindasana. Um, and and then. Okay, and that bubble, I'm just going to read proper. He's okay. lying within the half of that universe, which is full of the water of his body. Okay. Sort of like a uh, placenta. <laughs> I don't know if it's exactly like a placenta. <laughs> but <laughs> I, just, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> I guess you're, th- you're, you're thinking of this. Of thinking this, of a home birth. You're, you're thinking of the... You're thinking of the um, uh, of the, the the universe is like a big womb in a sense, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. Causal mother's womb. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's Garbhadakshai Vishnu. And then. And then for, again, the, the Lord Brahma is born from his navel. Yes. Lord Brahma then engin- he he works with, and I believe it'll come up here, the Mahatattva, kind of like the raw ingredients are there, and he becomes empowered to create from those raw ingredients. Where does Kiradakshai Vishnu fit in this? That's the third one that comes next. After Lord Brahma creates, and, and by creating, he's creating the various species. He's creating the various bodies. Then within all the bodies, then Vishnu expands one more time as Kiradakshai Vishnu, also known as the Paramatma. Kiradakshai so, Vishnu, I thought Kiradakshai Vishnu was on the ocean of milk. No, he, he appears in many ways within this universe, but especially he's appear, it's saying that all the other, any Vishnu that comes after Garbhadakshai Vishnu in the universe yeah. is gonna, is, can be called Kshirdakshai Vishnu. He does yeah. appear on the ocean of milk within this within universe. This, okay, that's where he appears. But okay. he's also appearing in the heart of every living being. 
and they could all be called Kirdak Sai Vishnu. Acha. So the super soul is also Kirdak Sai Vishnu. Also yeah. sometimes called. I think there's a difference between Bengali and Sanskrit. Yeah. One they say Shiradak Shai, they're hard Ks and soft Ks. Okay. Like Kshatriya for a warrior or a Chatriya. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Culture from Roganath. A little bit of anyway. Okay. It is believed. It is believed. Furthermore, it is believed that the universal planetary systems are situated on I just read that. Yeah. Did I? Text three, yep. Text four. The devotees with their perfect eyes see the transcendental form of the Purusha, who has thousands of legs, thighs, arms, faces, all extraordinary. In that body, there are thousands of heads, ears, eyes, and noses. They're, t- <laughs> they're decorated with thousands of helmets, glowing earrings, and are all adorned with garlands. You, you know, yesterday I mentioned that that first verse uh, reminded me of the Purusha Shukta. Yeah. And this all the more. What you know? Do you know the you, you've chanted Purusha Shukta before? Uh, ne- the really. Shusha, Pusha, I've never. Really. I've never chanted it. It's saying he has thousands of eyes. He has thousands of legs. He, you know. These are the prayers that the demigods recite. Yeah. To to Lord Vishnu. To, to Lord Vishnu. To this form. To appear yeah. to them, and then uh, Bra- and then Vishnu speaks to Brahma through his heart. Isn't that interesting? Through, speaks to Brahma through his heart, and then Brahma shares to the demigods what's up with Lord Vishnu, what's going to happen. Tene Brahma Hridaya Adikavye, which was mentioned in the first verse of the Bhagavatam. There we speaking, go. Speaking, oh, speaking to Stuba, you. Quoting but, it. But interesting here, it said that the, the devotees with their perfect eyes. The devotees with their perfect eyes, because you need a proper vision. Yeah. We're in training. We got bad vision. Yeah. We're trying to correct our vision. We see with material vision. We fall in love with material vision, isn't it? But it's so limited. It's so limited. It's so limited. <laughs> Based on beauty, love soon dies. Shakespeare once said. <laughs> nice, right? right. <laughs> Based on beauty. But you know, it it re- it reminds me a little bit of that verse from the Brahma Samhita, right? That same Brahma. Pramanjana velo- Pramanjana charita bhakti velochanena. Santa sadaiva hridaya yeshu veloki yanti. If you want to see the Lord, you must see them with the eyes. You know, in the old days, if you got some issue with your eyes, you got to put some herbal uh, ointment. ointment in your eyes. You salve. smear it with a salve. Um, they say, if you really want to see the Lord, you must smear your eyes with the salve of love. Mm. When you have love in your eyes, that means you can't have distinctions. You have some, you're seeing people as what they are underneath everything. Mm. Underneath this karmic, I have a karmic blob. This is a big blob of karma. I got it due to some action, right? And I'm gonna, it's going to go away and I'm going to have another blob, you know? And underneath, and, and, and some other blobs out there, bags of blood. It's like a bag of blood. True. Isn't it? All you have to do is cut it and it'll start dripping blood. It's a big bag of blood. We're falling in love with different bags of blood. Are we going dark again? We, no, <laughs> this is just reality. We're a big bag of blood. Plopping around. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> this is your positive dose of daily Bag of uh, uplifting information. <laughs> Write a song about it, Robert. Oh, by the way, it is Monday. And today, if, what, what do we call Mondays again? Reboot Monday. Recalibrate oh. Monday. I thought we were looking for a sexier name than Recalibrate <laughs> we Monday. Come up with we're, taking, we're taking votes for uh, what is Monday. Uh, so we're, going, uh, we're pulling over at the, at the rest stop here. Today is Monday. If you fell short on any of your personal goals about your diet or your health or your, sometimes those can spiral down, can't they? And we say, oh, we, get, we get to our New Year's resolution, but we do it every Monday. Every Monday we check in with who we, who we are, what we want to become, where we're at, how am I dealing with my emotions today? And uh, it's Monday. Whatever it is, whatever we did yesterday or this whole week or maybe this whole week was like we like to undo. Everyone want to undo your week, like control Z, your mm-hmm. week. Is it Apple Z, my week? I want to undo that. This is our Monday. We get started. It's our new year, so to speak, our new week. So it's Monday. You can write that down, what you want to become this week. And see you next Monday. Okay. okay. Go, Stu. Uh, back to the Bhagavatam. Back to the Bhagavatam. All right. Keeping us on track. This form, the second manifestation of the Purusha, is Namely, the... Namely, Garbhadakshai Vishnu. 
um, is the source and indestructible seed of the multifarious incarnations within the universe. From the particles and portions of this form, different living entities like demigods, men, and others are created. So again, what is Krishna doing? Nothing. Krishna's got nothing to do. He's just having fun. He's just having fun. He's playing running through the forest with his friends. He's having his loving interludes with his parents, with his girlfriends. He's, he's enjoying on the highest level, pure divine love. And when it comes to all the business of the universe, he's taking care of that through the Purusha avatars. And here it's mentioned that even the Purusha avatars are creating the devas, the various gods who again, take care of the various departments, the water department, the heat department, et cetera. And by the way, I like interludes, loving interludes. interludes. <laughs> it just came to me. <laughs> A loving interlude. Yeah. So, yeah, so Krishna, so this is describing how Krishna doesn't need to take care of these things. They're all be taken care of. I bet the commentary is interesting on this one. You want to dip in a little, Rogan? Yeah, sure. Purport. The Purusha, after creating innumerable universes in the Mahat Tattva, that's like the raw ingredients. The raw ingredients, that's a great way to put it. What did you call it one day? The ingredients batter. of a smoothie? The, the batter. Smoothie. Batter. <laughs> the smoothie. I like to think of a healthier thing. But the, but the smoothie doesn't transform into something else when t- the heat is added. The smoothie stays a smoothie. The smoothie is actually a destruction of like the ingredients, whereas the batter turns into something more. You know what? Let's meditate on cake. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the batter is in the undeveloped form, whereas okay. the smoothie is kind of in the... It's complete form. Uh, the Purusha, after creating innumerable universes in the batter or Mahat Tattva, entered each of them as the second Purusha, Garbhadakshai Vishnu. When he saw that within the universe, there was only darkness in space without a resting place. He filled half the universe with water from his own perspiration and laid himself down in the same water. I think I did that in yoga today. <laughs> And then this you did water yoga, did you called, do yoga nidra afterward? Huh? Did you do yoga nidra afterward? <laughs> I just did a shavasana right in my own sweat. This water is called Garboduck, Garboducka. Then from his navel, the stem of the lotus flower sprouted, and on the flower petals, the birth of Brahma, or the, or the master engineer of the universal plan took place. Brahma became the engineer of the universe and the Lord himself took charge of the maintenance of the universe. Um, as Vishnu. As Vishnu. Brahma was generated from, Brahma was generated from Rajaguna of Prakriti or the mode of passion and nature. And Vishnu became the Lord of goodness. Vishnu being transcendental to all the modes is always aloof from materialistic affection. In other words, he doesn't develop any, he's not bewildered or attracted to the material energy. Okay. As we become. This, hello? Vishnu being transcendental to all. Of, That's what you uh, just read. Gunas, is, always is always aloof from materialist effect. Thank you. This has always been, this has already been explained. From Brahma, there is Rudra or Shiva, who is in charge of the mode of ignorance or darkness. He destroys the whole creation by the will of the Lord. Therefore, all three, namely Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, are incarnations of Garbhadakshayi Vishnu. So, so we've, we've just heard about the Purusha avatars, and now we're hearing about what's called the Guna avatars. That Lord Vishnu himself takes up responsibility for the Sattva Guna, the mode of goodness. He himself creates Brahma, who's in charge of the mode of passion, or Rajaguna, and he creates... And from Brahma comes, just like you're saying, from candle to candle, you know, from Brahma comes Shiva, who then takes up the role of the responsibility of the Tamaguna and ultimately the destruction. So we're hearing about the various avatars and how they're all coming through Garbhadakshaya Vishnu. I'm working on a sexy name for Monday. <laughs> right now, the people have come up with the Reboot Monday. What do you, let's take a vote on Reboot Monday. No, no. Still is saying no way. How about Reset? <laughs> How about Monday Reset? The Monday Reset. Boring. <laughs> Boring. All right, keep going, guys. Keep going. Mindful Monday. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I think the... No? Too hip. Too hip. 
radical, the radical reboot. And Monday's got to be in the title. All right, keep going, guys. You have a few minutes left. Okay, we got, we, we don't have, we have 15 minutes to figure out what Monday is going to be. Mukti Monday. Monday. <laughs> 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 All right. All right, quiet on the set. Moga. Moga Monday. <laughs> Recalibrate Monday. Okay, come on, guys. All right, come on. Let me, let me, let me, let's go back to Coach Tuba's. He wants to play ball here. <laughs> wow. All right. It's a long commentary. Yeah. First of all, the beginning of creation, there were four unmarried sons of Brahma, the Kumaras, oh. who being situated in this vow of celibacy underwent severe austerities for realization of the absolute truth. Okay. So these are these first children born of Brahma and they, were, and they didn't want to grow up. So they stayed young forever. They're called the four Kumar. Kumar is like an age. It means like a little kid. And they were like these, uh, they didn't want anything to do with the universal creation. So they stayed aloof and they were like these four little sages. And they understood once you grow up, you get entangled in so many other things, let's just stay young. But they had the wisdom of the great sages. Pretty, pretty cool, pretty, pretty insightful. There were some great, great chapters about, about them coming up in the third canto. Mm. So what, that, this verse begins a long list of various avatars, various ways that Krishna, the, the terms used are porsh, plenary portions or portions of plenary portions, right? Right. That I don't think I've even ever used the word plenary in my life before I read the Bhagavatam. Yeah, I didn't. He's a plenary portion. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take just a plenary portion, please. <laughs> I'm not that hungry. <laughs> so the plenary portion means... <laughs> <laughs> Trying to impress people with that. <laughs> Bring that out at the no, dinner just, party. Just have a little plenary. <laughs> just, just a plenary. But the, from what I understand, the plenary portions mean those avatars that are non-different. They're absolutely Lord Vishnu. And then the... The plenary portions yeah. are absolutely Lord Vishnu? Like plenary means like absolute non-different. Can someone Google me a plenary, what it means? <laughs> That's talking. That's another use of the word plenary. That could because that means the whole. Like everybody's got to come. Oh, I'm a plenary portion then. <laughs> <laughs> Uncooperative. Unconditional. A there's no conditions. There's okay. There's okay. That means it's in full. In full. So a plenary portion of a plenary portion. A part of a plenary portion would be like the four Kumaras. Mm -hmm. I've always heard Lord Durvas was a plenary portion of Lord Shiva. That means he's Lord Shiva. If that's a fact. If that's a fact. Someone search Duravas Mooney, please. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it's all interesting stuff. So in any case, the, it's going to be one verse after another. Various ways that Lord Vishnu appears himself in this world or he empowers another to appear in this, in this world for a special purpose. The creation of the material world is affected, maintained, and then again annihilated at certain intervals. What do you it's mean, amazing, huh? It's like our bodies are too. Created, maintained, and annihilated. An ant also happens in a few days. A bee, two weeks, right? An oak tree, a few hundred years. But it's yeah, all the same thing. A field mouse. A field mouse, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> right? The cycle's bigger. The universe has a beginning, a middle, and an end. No matter how organic the planet gets. We stop global warming. It's still going to be annihilated. I'm not saying don't care. We have to care. We have to be compassionate. That's part of our dharma. Is live as natural. But there's still going to be a destruction of the universe. It's going anything to be composed of the material energy. Right. Anything composed of property. This is fundamental. Like you're saying, you got to get the equations straight at the beginning. Sure. So we want to get the equation straight at the beginning. We understand that everything made out of everything that's made of matter, everything that's not spirit is temporary. And it's going to go through creation, maintenance, and ultimately destruction. Some, sometimes it'll go quick. Sometimes it'll take a long time. But really, what is quick and long? They're all relative. What's quick to one person is long to another person. They're all going through these cycles. Mission Monday. 
Monday makeover. Monday makeover. Monday makeover. I'm going to throw that out <laughs> to the chat group here. Monday makeover. It's got, I'm thinking makeup makeover. I need a makeover. What's up with my life? Um, anyway, it's nice to see things in that perspective too. That every, to the degree that I'm trying to hold on to anything in this world, there's pain. And the fact is everything in this world has had its beginning, its middle, and its end. We've got to come to terms with it. You got to come to terms with it. And that's including the beauty our bodies, of, including our possessions, everything. Yeah. Sound like my kid out there. First of all, in the beginning of, okay. The supreme enjoyer of all sacrifices, Lord Vishnu, accepted the incarnations of a boar. Unusual. Not boring boar, like an actual boar with tusks. The second incarnation, and for the welfare of the earth, he lifted the earth from the nether regions of the universe. Long story. Long story. We'll don't even there. ask. We'll get there. If you're unfamiliar with it, don't even ask. Third canto, we'll get there. Yes. In the millennium of the Rishis, the personality of God had accepted a third empowered incarnation in the form of Dev Devar Devarshi Narada. So here the word empowered incarnation, right? Yep. Shaktyavesha avatar, another type of avatar. And that He's, would be the part of the plenary portion, right? Part, okay. Not so Narada portion. wasn't Vishnu. No. But he was a plenary. He was a he was invested with Shakti of of Vishnu. Yeah. Um, so we hear about Narada, Ramayan. We hear about him in uh, the Bhagavatam, the Mahabharata. Mahabharata. It's all over. He gets around, and he's not bound by time. That's one thing about having a material body. We're bound by time. And he, um, it says, he collected expositions of the Vedas which deal with devotional service and which inspired non fruitive action which I would assume is referring to the Narada Bhakti Sutras. Narada Bhakti Sutras. Beautiful book on Bhakti. All right. I never read it. Never? I never read you it. You would love it. Narada Bhakti Sutras. You would love it. Let's do it, Raghu. Okay. It's, it's ancient? Yeah. It's considered ancient. <laughs> yeah. Narada? Yeah. Must be. Talking about right here in Bhagavatam. But uh, it lets you and I read it together. Okay. On this trip. On this trip, let's do that. We're going to make it happen. This is what we're going to decide. Here's this a Monday. question. Here's a question. Um, is Narda still alive? <laughs> yeah, because he's in a spiritual form. Could be that angel we're talking about. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Narda is my co pilot. Okay, so he collected expeditions of the Vedas which deal with bhakti and which inspire non-fruitive activity, means working in this world, but not for something other than devotion and love. The great, the great Rishi Narada, who is an empowered incarnation of the personality of Godhead, Godhead, propagates bhakti all over the universe. All great devotees of the Lord, all over the universe, and, and in different planets and species of life are his disciples, including... Vyasadeva, the compiler of this book. Mm -hmm. um, Narada is the author of the Narada uh, Pancharatra, Pancharatra, which is the exposition of the Vedas, particularly for devotional service of the Lord. Oh. Narada Pancharatra trains people who have fruit of intentions or karmi yogis uh, or f um, to achieve liberation from bondage of fruit of work. The conditioned souls are mostly attracted by fruit of work because they want to enjoy life by the sweat of their brow. <laughs> so let's understand because as we read through Bhagavatam and these commentaries and other books by Shil Prabhupada, what, what we're talking about when he says fruit of work. Fruit of work. Yeah, that's another word. I'll, I would never say if it wasn't for the Bhagavatam. Yeah, it's, that's, Wait, what are you doing today? Some fruit of work? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little fruit of Every work, day. man. Yeah. It's cool. It means that we, we have the what, what yogis would would describe as a misconception that my happiness is going to come through external things. And therefore I work in this world to taste the fruits, to get some fruits that I'll try to enjoy. And so we can call that fruit of work. And one, another way to call it is karma. But of course mm -hmm. the word karma is used in several ways, but that it's talking about one's motive of how they operate in this world. They want something back for their work. The yogis aren't like that. The yogis don't want the things of this world. They want to the transcend the yogis. The even the, you know, even other types of yogis. Well, there's yogis who want cities. That, okay. I told the story Fair today enough. of Rikasura. Yeah. He wanted it, whoever's head he touched to be blown off. Yeah, technically that would be fruit of work. Yeah. 
I want something. I want. This. I want something. I want to blow someone's head off. I want to blow someone's <laughs> head off. I do all this yoga just so I get that power. Okay. Um, in the fourth, so now they're going through all the incarnations. Should we be doing this, or should, let's just read a couple more? We only you know, how much time? We got five more minutes. Let's okay. read that, you and then some we can decide if we want to go through them. There's some highlights. Okay. In the fourth incarnation, the Lord becomes Nara and Narayan. Who we offered obeisances to earlier today. Right? The twin sons of the wife of King Dharma. Thus, he undertook severe exemplary penances to control the senses. Let's read that purport since we're always offering obeisances to Nara and Narayan Rishi, also known as the supermost human being. <laughs> I was like, who is that? It's like a Marvel character. As King Rishabha advised his sons, Tapasya, or voluntary acceptance of penance for realization of the transcendence is the only duty of the human beings. It was so done by the Lord himself in an exemplary manner to teach us. The Lord is very kind to forgetful souls. He therefore comes himself and leaves behind necessary instructions and also sends his good sons as representatives to call all the conditioned souls back to Godhead. Recently, within the memory of everyone, Chaitanya also appeared for the same purpose, to show special favor to fallen souls of this age of iron industry. That's a nice way to put it, iron industry. The incarnation of Narayan is worshipped still at Buttery Narayan on the range of the Himalayas. So that is the Dom of the North, yeah. Badrinath, and the, the deity of Vyasadeva. And they say Vyasadeva is still alive too, right? Sure. You say sure, like, like we're expect, like everyone knows that. Well, no, but sure, they but sure. The Asadev, they say the author. Get, get ready for this one, guys. Hold on to your seats. The author of this book, according to Kastuba, is still <laughs> alive. Me, and he lives in a cave in the Himalayas. Yeah. What do you think about? Well, can I, you, can know, you explain that? We find that very difficult to believe your fantasy religious stories. <laughs> Is he still hanging out with the elephant-headed man, Ganesh, <laughs> who wrote down all these literatures? Okay, Ragusura. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing the Asura's advocate today. <laughs> well, you know, I just mentioned a little bit earlier that everything is going through cycles that's made, of, that's made out of matter. And, that, um, but, and they're all on different time cycles. Why We get caught up. We... It's even just like what kind of what we were discussing yesterday about people say that, um, well, the world was created by a big bang and everything just fell into place. But we can, we can justify it or rationalize it by saying it, happened, it took place over a very long time. Right. What difference does that make? Whether something happened, if something could happen slow, it could happen fast. It's like, you know, t yogis are trained to understand that time is relative. Sure. One person's life. What's that got to do with your the old man still living in the cave? Well, what I'm saying is that a lifetime and an elephant that 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 a lifetime that a life you always talking about ants and all that. Right? <laughs> all a right, lifetime, well, tell me a lifetime to an preach ant, to me to them. You know that may be a long lifetime, but to us it's a very short lifetime. And to someone else, they have a lifetime that's longer than us. Why should we believe that that's not possible? That's that's described in in so many of these shastras that life in other places in the universe is much longer that there are beings that have longer lifetimes than us, that even previous ages on this earth, people live longer. What is it exactly that makes that impossible? You tell me. I'm flipping it on you. Why is that impossible? Because you haven't seen it? Because you haven't seen this in your, in your short little lifetime? It's impossible? Tell me, Rogu. I don't know. <laughs> I never thought about it. Um, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, we just... How, how, many, how many beings... Are, isn't there a certain amount of like uh, Jivan Muktis or... Oh, what, what, what's the word? Jivan... Muktas? Not Jivan Muktas or Jivan... Jivan what? Where's, where's Chineshwar when I need him? <laughs> uh, they, they don't die. Like, I think it's Narada, Parsharam, Vash, you know what I'm talking about? Parmanandi, Parsharam, Hanuman, they're still alive. Yeah. yeah. Ashwatthama, uh, Ashwatthama wandering around. Yeah, who just told me Ashwatthama died? <laughs> Ashwatthama didn't die. He's still wandering around the Himalayas. Ashwatthama the elephant off. died. <laughs> He's pissed <laughs> off at everybody too. <laughs> but you know, um, going back to what we said yesterday, there are things here that we haven't, things are going to be mentioned in the Bhagavatam and so many other important yogic texts. 
and we may have no experience of them. Sorry. We're going to pick up here. It's, we're done. <laughs> we're done. We'll, we'll pick it up tomorrow there. Hey, if you've been listening on the podcast, that was me rudely cutting off the stuba with dance music. By the way, hey, show number three, you still haven't said what we're waiting for you to say. We'll see you tomorrow, podcast people. Everybody else on the Zoom, stop clapping. Hi, Rocco. Bolo! Rocco's on the show. Kiss Nabola,